Tonight we have a special program and we will take you in a historical moment of the Philippine Independence Day. And tonight we are going to show you the celebration in San Francisco Union Square. Let's take a look. I'm Cecilia Gerland, Executive Director of the Bataan Legacy Historical Society. Um, the society was founded to address the lack of information on the Filipino defenders of Bataan and Corregidor during World War II in the Philippines. The Filipinos made up seven-eighths of the main line of resistance in Bataan and uh, during the death march uh, approximately 10,000 Filipinos and 750 Americans died during the infamous death march. A lot of them suffered from massive starvation and disease. As early as January 1942, just a month after the war started, they were already on half rations. By February, there was no more medication for malaria. Quinine was gone, and by March, they were already on quarter rations. 500 people a day were getting sick with malaria and dysentery. So that by the time of the surrender on April 9, 1942, there were no longer any reserve troops. A lot of them were suffering from massive starvation and disease so that during the infamous Bataan Death March, which took place after the surrender on April 9, 1942, a lot of them died, 10,000, approximately 10,000 Filipinos and 750 Americans died in the infamous Bataan Death March, a 60-mile march from Mariveles to Capas Tarlac, 
And once they got to Camp O'Donnell in Tarlac, another 20,000 died. Um, but however, this was recorded only as the largest single surrender in U.S. military history. But its greater significance is not known by many. What the Filipinos did, despite the fact that they were hardly trained, they were given World War I artillery and ammunition, and they suffered from massive starvation and disease. They actually delayed the timetable of the Imperial Japanese Army and prevented them from, from occupying Australia. So that is the greater significance of the Bataan Death March. I started the project uh, in 2012 because of the lack of information on the, Ameri on the Filipino defenders of Bataan and Corregidor. Most history books only mention the American defenders, even though the Filipinos made up seven-eighths of the main line of resistance. One of our projects is to implement a California legislation that was passed in 2011, AB 199, which encourages for the inclusion of the role of the Filipinos during World War II in the Philippines. This legislation has never been implemented. We are calling on the public to get in touch with the California Department of Education, State Superintendent Tom Torlakson's office, to have this included in the social sciences curriculum for grades 7 to 12 in California. My message to the youth and to the general public is we must learn about the legacy of the Filipinos and Americans who fought for the freedom that we are enjoying today. They sacrificed so much so that we could enjoy all this freedom here in the United States and the world. When World War II was declared on December 8, 1941, after the invasion of Pearl Harbor, the ravages of war did not come to the continental United States. Instead, the war was fought in the former colony of the Philippines, where thousands of Filipino and American soldiers died, and a million civilians perished. This is the price of the freedom that we are enjoying today. We would like to invite the public to learn more about World War II in the Philippines during our conference. It's an all-day conference on Saturday, October 24. It will be held at the Corrette Auditorium at the San Francisco Main Public Library from 10 o'clock to about 5 o'clock, Corrette Auditorium, October 24. Please visit our website, and if you can register through Eventbrite, we're also opening a four-month uh, exhibition at the San Francisco Main Library. It will open on September 12, and it will uh, end on January 2016. So we invite the public to these two events. Please check out our website, www.bataanlegacy.org, and please also check, check out our Facebook page, Bataan Legacy. Thank you very much. Mabuhay. Hi, I'm Jenny Bauer Young. I'm from Kalinga and I came here in the US in 2006. And these are the Kalinga Lagas, um, the, weaver, the weaving of the Kalinga people in Kalinga, and I brought it in here for, uh, to promote and to preserve the Kalinga weaving. This one was taken in Babylon, Lubwagan, Kalinga. They are preparing for, um, they wash the threads to be prepared to the laga and then they hang it to dry. And this one we're doing a workshop at home. And there's Holly, the other co-founder. And it's all the same. And then the kids are learning how to do the petipit before they will uh, collide it. In Kalinga, we have 21 designs, different patterns and patterns and design. And now is they are doing a lot of modifications, so they change the color. 
but me, um, I'm still doing the traditional, traditional style and patterns and their style. Okay. Okay. Because they have to pick, pick, pick that's the uh, design. And then this is the lacto. This design is the lacto. In 2010, we founded the Kalinga, Kalinga Hornia Circle um, with all the women from the Bay Area. And I taught them how to weave the backstrap weaving of the Kalinga people. Um, our teacher is from Lubaga, Okay. And right now, this is just sort of the starter pattern. If the 
are people like this one or other community um, that are like organizing community uh, festivals like that, they call us to do demonstration and I'll do workshop and I teach them at home one on one whoever wants to learn the Kalinga bus shop today.
Iberian is our uh, uh, writing system prior to uh, Spanish colonization. Uh, I use my art as, uh, as advocacy for um, pre-Filipino uh, culture. Uh, my, my motto is uh, uh, pre-Philippine scripts for cultural identity uh, leading to economic gain and cultural preservation. Uh, I got interested in it when I was a kid. Uh, I used to go to my Lolo here in Chinatown. I asked him what that writing was on the walls and the signs. He said, that's how Chinese people write. So then I asked him, Lolo, how did you write in the Philippines? He says, oh, we wrote in English. So since then, it, it seemed kind of strange to me. Um, until I lived, I, I lived in the Philippines after high school, and I was able to um, uh, find a basic chart of it, and that's what got me uh, even more interested in the writing. Um, I've been doing this publicly since 2008. Uh, since then, I've done um, uh, lectures in universities and museums around uh, Europe, the U.S., uh, Philippines, Japan. The the interest the interest is growing every year. Uh, because especially now with the internet, um, the, the flow of information is much easier um, through the books as well as um, online distance education. I, my my hope for uh, Baibayin is to have it in uh, regular use, what not in terms of like replacing the Roman alphabet, but as a Filipino identity, like in signs, just like you go to Chinatown or to uh, Koreatown you see their businesses using um, their indigenous script.
from the Capua Kulintan group performing the music of the Southern Philippines.
Kumusta na kayo? Parang maraming Pilipino sa San Francisco. Maraming ah, hindi naman. May mga Bisaya ba dito? Raise your hand kung mga Bisaya kayo. Hi! Ako po si Cynthia Alexander. At ito po ang kaibigan kong si Kwami, galing LA. Ako po ay... Uh... Yay! At kung, uh, welcome to the Kalayang 2014 San Francisco. Um, nilipad nila ako dito mula Seattle. But I've been living in Seattle for two years lang po. Anyways, I'm going to teach you a rhythm. So kailangan namin yung I need your participation in this. So I'm going to teach you a basic rhythm on Tiddu. Anyone know what a Tiddu is? It's, yes. It's a Magindanawan rhythm. Opo. So you must have heard that sometime today. And it goes, the rhythm goes like this. So what we'll do is we'll just clap along, okay? So simple lang po, ganito. Thank you. 
Pilipinas nang talaga. Gano'n nakakatagal dito? How many years have you been living here? 10 years, 15 years? <laughs> Di na kayo umuwi ha? Sarap dito. <laughs> Maganda yung hangin. Next song I'm giving you is a, a song written by Maningning Miklat. Um, she was a Filipino Chinese poet who was living in the Philippines and she was one of the top uh, women poets in China when she was alive. And the person and the guy who wrote the words to this, uh, no, no, the music to this is Joey Ayala. See, Joey Ayala po ay kuya ko. Dumaan ako. I passed by a quiet river. The world is seemingly asleep. The fruit were to fall into the water. Such is the sound of my heart breaking. Dumaan ako.
Thank you for joining us this evening. I hope you enjoyed our presentation. Please tune in every Monday from 6.30 to 7.30 Shabo College Television. Write us or please email cbenipayo01 at yahoo.com. Thank you again for joining. We'll see you next week.